Good afternoon. I'm Simon St. Lawrence, Senior Editor at O'Reilly Media, Inc. I'm here with Cody Lindley, who's the uh, author of our upcoming JavaScript Enlightenment book, as well as the DOM Enlightenment and jQuery Enlightenment books that are on their way. He's uh, been, been working for 13 years now on various JavaScript-related projects and is spending a lot of time explaining to people still figuring it out, the, the many things that he's learned. So I guess kind of a basic question, how much do JavaScript developers need to know? Well, if they consider themselves JavaScript developers, I'd say they need to know JavaScript completely. <laughs> um, I think the idea of a JavaScript developer is, is pretty new, new in the sense of recent years. Um, maybe the question's better asked if you're a front-end engineer that writes HTML and CSS, how much JavaScript do you need to know? And I think that all depends upon um, whether you're working on websites or you're working on applications. If you're working on applications, then today you are a JavaScript engineer. Um, and if you're working on websites, I think you kind of dance um, sort of in a couple different areas of engineering type fields. But I, at this point, it's not that complicated to know JavaScript. There's so much good information out there. Um, the question is, are people willing to do it? Yeah, a lot of folks seem to enjoy relying on libraries. Uh, it's some, in some ways, it feels like a, a gateway, a path in, but then sometimes people just stop there. Yeah, it's, I, I've, you know, being at a couple of conferences and, and being around the JavaScript community, I often hear people talking, um, you know, down on jQuery users or library users. And I, I'm awful, I'm baffled by this um, because these people, you know, they drive in cars and they use all sorts of technologies that help us get things done quickly. And I don't know how an engine works in a car, but I still ride in one. Um, and there are mechanics that need to know how the engine works. And there's people that drive the car and they don't need to know how the engine works. And there's room for both in the community, I think. Well, your, your Enlightenment books seem to take readers from kind of one level to another. Um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, where, where you see readers coming from and, and where you're hoping to enlighten them to? Yeah, most of, most of my books um, are, are targeted at that. 80 to 90% of developers out there um, that are probably not intimately familiar with JavaScript. And it's really um, sort of a stepping stone to becoming a JavaScript developer. Um, and I think my heart's very much in the jQuery community when I write these things. I'm, I'm thinking very much of people that implement plugins or use jQuery and then sort of get in trouble and they don't know what to do because they haven't taken the time to truly understand the DOM or JavaScript or some of the HTML5 APIs. Um, and so I, I'm writing to these people hoping that, that they will kind of take a peek at the engine or behind the curtain, so to speak. So as people are learning JavaScript, you know, it's a learning curve. It seems to have some hills. It seems to have some valleys. Which, which parts do you find to be the hardest parts of the learning curve? You know, I, I think uh, probably understanding the nature of an object. And that's why with uh, JavaScript Enlightenment, I, I started in just simply expa explaining the idea of storing data in an object and just how simple of a concept that, that is and how similar it is to um, an Excel spreadsheet or just a simple table uh, with row and, row and columns, um, obviously representing uh, property and values. Um, but it's interesting, in all the introduction to JavaScript books I've ever read, I always felt like they didn't, and maybe this is because they didn't want to scare away beginners, but I, I don't think it's a hard concept to wrap your head around an object. I just don't feel like anybody's ever taken the time to be, actually, this is a simple concept. You know, we're storing data inside of objects. 
and an object is a table, and you use tables all the time. Um, and I really felt like that's the path for people learning, in my opinion. Yeah, I kind of I mean, think about my own learning process. I, I first used JavaScript just as an object manipulation language, and the idea that I would want to create my own objects was really kind of strange. Um, I did it because I was working with cookies, and dealing with cookies directly got to be too aggravating. Um, but it was a it was a big jump. But today it's yeah. like, yes, you can manipulate objects for a little while, and then you really need to leap on to you know building your own stuff, um, packaging your own stuff. It's it's a different world in which I almost feel like many programmers are building their own frameworks, even if they don't think that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. I think a lot of people have been explained, well, it's still all over the web, but a lot of people are, are being explained to JavaScript through primitive types. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's not doing them any favors. We should be explaining JavaScript um, as an object language, not as a language of primitive types. And so every sort of intro book I've ever seen starts from explaining what a simple string is or a, you know, a number value or, or something like that. And they do it in the form of primitives and, and then they create this mental model um, for the reader and then they ask this reader to leap to objects. And it, it, it's very confusing for people, I think. You've been at this for a long time and you've seen a lot of libraries come and go. Um, are there libraries that are especially worth learning from for coding style or their approach to objects or you know, just general usability? I, I mean, any of the mainstream libraries uh, are worth learning from. You know, I don't, I don't really, I, I mean, I, I don't really think I would have something negative to say about any of them mm -hmm. from a learning perspective. They all um, contain various degrees of genius on, based on the way somebody's brain works, mm -hmm. and not everybody's brain works the same. Um, Dojo developers tend to work differently than jQuery developers, and YUI people are sort of in between, and Mood Tools people are, you know, somewhere between Dojo and YUI. It's, I mean, all of these libraries are, and then you get into the micro libraries, and and really, I I feel like the most can be learned from micro libraries. Um, because the bigger libraries can be pretty monolithic, and unless you really have a, a grasp on the DOM, learning from jQuery could be quite complicated too. Um, but micro libraries, you know, uh, gosh, uh, the the stuff John's doing with Lodash and and all the um, you know platform.js, I've enjoyed reading through his code a lot, and that's a great place to learn, I think. Okay. Well, you just brought up the DOM, and I think a large part of the reason that people were so fond of jQuery when it first arrived was it let them do less with the DOM. Um, it's certainly not the most popular JavaScript API out there, um, at least not the most well-loved, probably the most frequently used. Um, but is it time for developers to, to jump in, embrace it, figure it out? Browser manufacturers have, have, um, are on the ball. Mm -hmm. today. And browser uh, versions are obviously moving and moving quickly. And the implementations of the specifications are actually uh, co being more correct than they ever have been in the past. Um, due to this, there are legitimate development constraints that would allow a person to avoid the overhead of libraries and directly using um, the DOM APIs. I know that there are some developers that you know, believe there should be an in-between between the APIs themselves because of the change, add in the browser um, manufacturers cycle so quickly and, and you, might, you might need some sort of abstraction there. But I think it's a t totally legitimate concept to think you could get hired to, to build a web kit something and then go and use um, the DOM API for a web kit browser and be okay um, depending upon what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, I'm seeing a lot of this in mobile, especially, where people seem to be aiming for WebKit. Well, Android isn't always WebKit, but mostly getting there, and the iOS stuff certainly is. 
Yeah, I, do, I, I there's no question that if you're dealing with older browsers, jQuery is going to solve a lot of problems for you. If um, you happen to be one of the lucky few that get to develop for modern browsers only, and you're doing some light lifting with the DOM, I, I don't know if throwing jQuery at it necessarily uh, makes sense. Um, if if you want, you know, if, if you're performant minded and you want to get, you know, closer to the metal, uh, the DOM API is a viable solution these days, in my opinion. Great. Well, it it seems like you've been digging into the DOM and its many incarnations pretty deeply lately with some uh, testing applications. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. Um, I think there's currently some deprecated tables um, that most web developers turn to when they start developing for the DOM. Um, and I know when I started thinking more in depth about the DOM, I was really looking for a resource to tell me of the modern browsers and maybe one or two versions back, um, which properties and methods were supported uh, you know, with DOM nodes um, and for working with the DOM. And so I just decided to scratch my own itch here and, and sit down uh, and try and figure out an automated browser test that I could run uh, you know, through browser stack that it basically accumulates all these tests, put them into a table, and, and basically I have a single page that tells me, you know, which events, uh, which browsers support which events and which methods and which properties for all of the DOM. And we needed, I think, something updated in the community. So Great. And something that can stay updated pretty easily, it sounds like. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not totally familiar with um, how some of the tables online are being generated. I'm guessing they're static. But if this is all automated, then it's as simple as as rerunning the tests and up, updating the website. <laughs> great, great. Adding new browsers, keeping things exciting. Yep. So, great. Um, so, what other what other tools and resources do you think the JavaScript world needs? Um, I mean, DOM is obviously kind of a, a classic table case where you just need to know what works and which which app. But are there other pieces, other things you'd like to see? So I, one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is we have a lot of authors writing about HTML5 and friends or, you know, mm -hmm. HTML5 JavaScript APIs. Um, and they write about them in a very surfacey way, mm -hmm. and they write about multiple versions. Now, this isn't always the case. I know O'Reilly's done a, a like a file, a book on the uh, mm -hmm. file API. I want to see more people focusing solely on um, these APIs and and writing, uh, you know, in a exhaustive and systematic way about these APIs. So from a reading perspective, I'd, I'd like to see more of that. Um, documentation, I, I really feel like, you know, I know Platform um, is is trying to fill this gap, and it's, we're going to see if they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I really feel like Mozilla right now is has the best documentation for um Really, a lot of HTML stuff and JavaScript stuff, DOM stuff, um, and I'm just—I I feel that it could be better. Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, you know, how right. it's better, but I feel like it could. So, um, as far as like tools, th that is an interesting question because every every I rarely feel as if though there isn't a if I have a problem. Mm -hmm. always feels like there's a couple of tools out there. And if I don't like those couple of tools, um, I have the ability to change them typically. So I don't think there's gaping holes in the um, programmatic solutions available. Mm -hmm. if, if anything, there's too much noise out there, right? Yeah, there's lots of pieces. Um, but no, I... I feel like we we need to do a better job at communicating at the bulk of developers out there. That's what I think. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, Cody. Uh, hope to see you again soon. 
and uh, we'll talk more in the future. Thanks. Thanks for having me.